Today we're going to talk about Bubble's new responsive editor or Flexbox. Let me just say that I love, love, love this new designer and now that we have it, I am not even sure how I used to use the old one without pulling out my hair. So why is it so great? It makes it easier to design for all devices, desktop, tablet, mobile. It rearranges the layouts of your elements automatically based on how much screen real estate the user is working with. You might say it flexes. There's a few fundamental concepts that you must understand and we are going to cover them here today. I'm Jason, this is Build Apps Without Code, let's dig in. Here I have a group with a bluish background. Now if I go to the page properties of this group, the first thing I'm interested in is container layout. This setting will determine how the elements inside the group will arrange themselves. Let's start with row. So this is my parent container. Inside it, I'm going to add another group. This group is a child element in relation to the parent. Let's give it some color and we'll make it 300 by 300 to start. Now when the parent containers layout is set to row, the child elements within the parent will arrange themselves horizontally, left to right. If I press Command D or Control D, it duplicates the element and you can see it went directly to the right of the first one. And if I did it again, again it goes to the right. So I have three child elements here within the parent element and since the container layout is set to row, they are arranging themselves from left to right horizontally. Now if we run out of space within the parent container, the element furthest to the right drops down. So if I duplicated this one more time, there's not enough space, so it drops just underneath. Let's go back to the parent layout settings. When row is chosen, we get the container alignment option right here. Right now we are aligning to the left. We can also align center. Now you can see these three elements are centered within the parent container. You can also align right. Space around, space between. These are super useful. Space around puts even space between the elements and the edges of the parent container. So you can see here I have 30 pixels between the first element and the edge of the parent container. Same on the other side, 30 pixels. And I have 60 in between because there's 30 pixels on each side of the elements. But on the parent container, if I chose space between, the elements on the end are pushed right to the edges. So the blue is pushed right to the left edge of the parent container and the yellow is pushed right to the right edge of the parent container. Let's open up the properties of one of the child elements. I'm gonna go to layout and right here, I can change the order of the elements. So I have a blue group which is sitting in the first spot, an orange group which is sitting in the second spot, and a yellow which is sitting in the third spot. Let's say I wanted blue to be last and not first. I can click on make last and that'll push it to the end. Um, if I wanted orange to be in the middle, I can say next. If I change my mind and I wanted blue back in the middle, I can say previous. So this is an easy way to change the order of the elements. I can also set the vertical alignment on each individual child element. These are all aligned to the top, but if I wanted to align middle or bottom, I can do that. And each element can actually have a different vertical alignment within the parent. So let's set this back up. Yellow was last. Now I can have blue vertical alignment top. Orange can be middle and yellow can be bottom. And there's one more called vertical stretch and that will stretch the element to its maximum height. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. So that's a brief overview of the row layout. Let's talk about column. If the parent container is set to column, the child elements will stack within it vertically. If I open the parent container and change the container layout to column, these three elements are now stacked on top of each other instead of beside each other. And if I click into the elements, I can also change the horizontal alignment now. Since the parent container type is column, 
You have the option for horizontal alignment. So on the blue, I can change that to center and, or to the right and the orange, I can put center. So they can all have different horizontal alignments. And finally, the ordering works the same. If I wanted yellow to be on top, I can say previous, previous, or I could say make first, and you can easily change the order. Opening up the parent container properties, again, we also have a parent container layout option for align to parent. This will allow us to anchor our child elements to a spot within the parent container. For example, the parent container, I'm gonna set to row for now. We're gonna left align and our vertical alignment on all these elements will be top. I'm gonna to grab an icon and drop it in this blue group. We'll change it to heart because I love you. We'll make it white. Now if I wanted this icon here to be anchored somewhere within the blue group, I can change the group alignment to align to parent. Right now it's fixed, I'm gonna change it to align to parent. Now when I look at layout settings for the icon, I get this little grid. Right now it is anchored to bottom middle, but I can go bottom right or dead center or top right. And if I duplicated that and we change it to, let's say a thumbs up, I can put this one somewhere else or I can put it in the same spot. And in that case, they'll just overlap each other. And now's a good time to probably mention that you can have parent containers nested within other parent containers. Parent containers within parent containers within parent containers within parent containers. Wow. And a container can be a parent and a child. So this blue element is a child element to this main parent group here. However, it's a parent container to the icons inside. Finally, we have fixed and fixed is like the old editor. It allows you to place elements anywhere by dragging them around. Um, this option is not responsive though. So generally I don't use it unless the container I'm using it for is very small and doesn't need to adjust based on screen size. So if I take our main parent group parent here, change it to fixed. Now I can just drag these anywhere I want instead of having them automatically arrange themselves. Okay, that's a brief overview of container layout. Let's move on to margin. Margin creates space around an element and is set on each element individually. Right now, there is no space between blue, orange, and yellow, and there's no space between the parent container and the element, so they're right on the edges. So if I wanted to create a little bit of margin here, let's say I wanted the blue one to be 20 pixels from the top and 20 from the left. Now it's pushed away from the parent container, um, 20 pixels top and left. However, since I set it on the blue one, it only put that margin on the blue group, not orange or yellow. So if I wanted orange as well to have some space, now I have to go to the orange element and also do 20 there and 20 left to push it away from blue. And yellow, same thing, I need 20 and 20 left. I might want right on this one too, since it's farthest to the right. And I can even set margin on these icons if I wanted the icons to be not quite right in the corner. I can put, say, left and bottom here. Okay, that works fine. Um, there is a better way to do it, and it's called padding. So let's take off the margin here on all these elements. And now instead of adding margin to each individual element, we're gonna do it a little bit differently. I'm gonna open up the group parent settings here because padding is set at the parent container level and it creates space within an element instead of around an element. So when we put margin on this blue group, we made space around the element. But if we put padding on our group parent, it's gonna create space within group parent. So if I said 20 top now, all three of these are pushed down and there's 20 pixels of padding around them. So I don't have to do it on all three like I did with margin. 
it's much easier to put padding on the parent container. I can also do left and that's going to push everything over 20 pixels to the right. And I could do bottom and right and bubble shows you with a little bit of grayness here where the padding is exactly that's been added to this parent container. So these three now have padding that push them away a little bit from the parent container from the top and the left and the right and the bottom but they are still touching each other and they don't like to touch each other. They like a little bit of space. So again, I could add margin on this orange group if I wanted, um, but there is a better way to do it. So instead of doing that, I'm going to open up the parent settings and apply gap spacing between elements. And in this case, we are adding column gap. And now you can see all the elements will have 20 pixels of spacing. And what happens is if you have another element here and we close up the group parents, in this case, I'm gonna remove the minimum height, close it up. Now that there is a second row of elements here because this one couldn't fit horizontally, so it got pushed down, we need to have gap spacing between the first row and the second row as well. And you can do that with row gap. So column gap is spacing between first, second, third column here. But if we also want a row gap between the rows, we could do that as well. So here, if I did 40, for example, now there's 40 pixels of spacing between the first row and the second row. Let's talk about sizing. This child group here, container layout is fixed. It's 300 width, 300 height. This means it will be this size on all devices. Not ideal. Now, if we change the container layout to anything but fixed, we get more options. I'm going to change it to align to parent like the blue one was. Now that we have changed the container layout from fixed to something else, we have this option to make this element fixed width. Okay, so let's just get rid of this yellow one for now. And if I uncheck this, what just happened? This element took all the available width. It's trying to be as large as possible. But now if we set a max width of say 600, it's still taking all the available space, but only to a maximum width of 600 pixels. If we head over to the responsive tab, you can see that if the available space is less than 600, the orange group there will start to shrink. And if we set the same settings on our blue one, Max width of 600. Now they're behaving the same. However, once both elements are at their minimum of 300, the right one will collapse below the left one. So as we're shrinking, the min is 300. So once it hits 300, now the orange group, since it's on the right, will collapse below the blue one. And if we get even smaller, since the minimum width is 300, it starts to get cut off. Okay, now why does it collapse at, what is it, 660? Well, let's think about this. This blue one is 300 pixels because that's the minimum. This orange one, 300 pixels, that's the minimum. So that's 600. And then we have 20 pixels of padding on the left and right, and we have 20 pixels of gap spacing. So 600 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 is 660. So that's why 660 is the maximum width where these two groups are still going to be side by side. But once we get under that, they collapse because now there is not enough space available for these to remain at 300 pixels minimum. Let's open up one of these. What happens if we select fit width to content? Now the element is going to try to be as small as possible. In this case, it will be 300 pixels since our minimum width is 300. And if we open up the orange one and say fit with the content, it will also try to be as small as possible, which is 300 pixels. Now the same can be done for height. If we take our parent container and we uncheck fit height to content, it's gonna open up, it's gonna stretch. Now if we open up the child element within it and choose vertical stretch as our vertical alignment, it will stretch the full height of the available space. Remember, we can do top, middle, bottom, or vertical stretch. And that's it. The absolute basics and all you really need to know to get started. 
Okay, if you go to buildappswithoutcode.com slash flexbox and sign up, I will send you a document, a cheat sheet that explains with graphics all the fundamentals of the responsive editor that we just covered. You're awesome. You can do this. A little bit of consistent practice every day and you will be a pro bubbler in no time. No coding experience necessary. Remember, I am as non-technical as you are. So if I can do it, you can do it. Much love. Peace.